All right. We are here with Shieldred. That's it. Shieldred, the true scriptures. That's her name now. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's a five mana, four, five menace. When it enters, your opponent sacks a non-token creature or planeswalker, which is pretty nice compared to the seven mana Shieldred that like probably makes your opponent sacrifice a sapling and you feel like an idiot. Um, upon your opponent's graveyard reaching, what is it, um, eight or more cards in it, you can flip this into the Saga, and it's got a bunch of things it does. For each opponent, destroy one creature or planeswalker, which is basically an edict of the front side, and then they discard three and mill three, and then you reanimate everything ever. Pretty cool. Um, probably a little rough to flip this sometimes, but it's kind of cool as a, like, edict on a stick. I don't know. I haven't played it before. I'm trying. I have basically all the typical black control -y style cards. This is like the white version of like mono black control as close as it gets probably, right? You don't have a blanket answer to everything, namely like enchantments and stuff. But I don't know. I want to try a like super creature light uh, package here and that's kind of what we're doing and that's what this sort of looks like. We have all the scary, like, ultimates to race to, Liliana. I don't know about the Veil, but it's probably better than it is worse, so. Uh, Davriel, the One Ring, uh, the other Shieldred, uh, well, the other good one, the Seven Mana one. Uh, it was in here for a second, and then I came to my senses. It's <laughs> it really, it's just, it's not good. It's one of the first, I think it was the first Mythic Rare I ever owned in Magic like years ago like 15 years i don't know it was a long time ago uh, the first ever mythic i owned was the shieldred the, the first one the whispering one and i don't think it's very good it was the only mono colored commander i ever played in commander as well um so it's i, I really like it but i again i i think magic is just not it doesn't care your opponent can edict once a turn and probably not even notice it's just really unfortunate but it is what it is with time, right? I am running Blood in the Snow, so I am running Snow-Covered Swamps. Don't like doing that too much, but Blood in the Snow is just a really good card, so <laughs> I gotta make... I gotta do it right. Um, Necropotence, because it's stupid. Phyrexian Arena and Underworld... Or Black Market Connections. I keep calling it Underworld Connections. Uh, Dark Ritual for all those busted turn three card or three mana cards on turn one. All the removal, the rocks to play this and not feel bad. And that's it. You've probably seen pretty much every card in here except maybe Increasing Ambition. But uh, I'm willing to try it. There's not many super awesome, oh, let me tutor for a combo piece. Or let me tutor for this massive game-changing, like, I assume a lot of the time I'm going to tutor for, like, oh, I need to stay alive. Let me find a sweeper. Right? Oh, I need to tutor for, I don't know, Liliana to get a clock going, so... I don't see any massive game-swinging tutors, which is not good, but um, until it's really bad, I'm just not going to change it. That's it. Oh, wait, wait. That's not it. Hive of the Eye Tyrant probably should not be in here, A, because man lands don't come up really often at all, and B, exiling your opponent's cards from graveyard doesn't really play nicely with Shieldred liking cards in my opponent's graveyard. Um... I just put it in there. I went against my own theory of, you know, <laughs> don't auto include these for the sake of it. I'm actually going to take it out. We're going to take it out. Yeah. I, I just, I'm not about it. All right, let's roll. I would love the cut down to be useful. We'll find out if it is. Surely cut down works this game. All right. First time for everything. Opponent has Pact of Negation in hand. Good to know about. was a really good draw. Davriel probably comes in play right now instead of the One Ring, I think. Oh, I would love to Thoughtseize, but no, I'm just going to play Davriel. Uh, discount spells, and my creature's going to be smaller. Hardly matters. All right. We actually get to Thoughtseize, too. That's hilarious. 
Um, my opponent's entire hand is not very scary. I, I guess I'll take Emrakul. It probably can wind up being the most annoying thing. But the fog is kind of weird. Cyclonic Rift isn't doing anything. I'll probably plus Davriel right now. Probably. If I can get a second... Or, or deal spam it. I think that's fine. When it names the one card you always name. Okay. So we attack... Tamiel for one. Remember, it, it has text on it that says you can't sacrifice stuff, so I can't, like, despair it. They have Oracle of the Alpha in their graveyard, but I don't think they want to cast that. They want to cast Urel. Okay, sure. wonder if that's what I would have done. I don't think so. They are just racing to, I guess... Really wanting to find Balagate Recovery. Why wouldn't you name Time Warp again? Oh, Recovery is a land. You can play it a land. I see, I see, I see. see. Alright, what's our next deal here? Discount again. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, then we lose life for our creature count. That's fine. Alright, double discount is just absolutely insane. Opponent does not currently have a counter spell. But again, Shieldred, uh, I can't make them sacrifice. I can... Nah, I can't do that either. Alright, let's go look for an answer for Tamiyo, I think. Don't really know what that answer looks like, to be honest with you. What if I just got Black Market Connections, or like one of these? Or Necropotence, because that's also just stupid. Yeah, let's get Necropotence, what am I talking about? With a whole discounted, like, army of cards, this is just really good. Girth Spiral, sure. They did not find a land, but they can still just pack it if they choose. They probably need to pack... Yeah, you probably need to pack that card. <laughs> I would assume that's uh, what you need to do. Not really upset with this one. And now I can play Shieldred next turn. Again, It I can't make them sacrifice Tamiyo, but that's probably fine. Alright, we're back to naming Time Warp. That's adorable. They actually got the other two extra turn cards. I kind of jacked that one up. But they can still cast him and I can't really stop them. Um, yeah, this is the part where I wish I had a removal spell for their commander, and I don't. So I'm just going to swing at this. This is looking pretty grim, though. Field of Ruins, actually, oh, it's not the best against me. It's not, yeah, I don't need, I don't need any of my lands to, I already have, like, a double discount. Yep. Here go. Here we are with the one-dimensional strategy of taking extra turns and doing literally nothing else. I wonder what they bounce though. Okay, they just bounce Shieldred. Oops. Then yeah, that makes sense. Why not? So that was essentially a cycle. They don't utilize it that efficiently. If this is Cyclonic Rift, I also think this is just fine. I don't really find that as a big deal. Which again, I can't kill... I can't uh, kill forever. I can kill it initially, but uh, they can recast it again anyways. Yep, I just probably have to just straight kill this. I mean, this isn't even a big deal for them. Yeah, you just recast it. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay, that's not ideal. I think I'm going to take the time to just cash this in right now. I think I want another deal here. Okay, drawing and gaining life is huge. Um... 
sacking two permanents. Hold control. So land. Probably sack the one ring. Actually, no, that that's not a good idea at all. What am I talking about? Yeah, that was uh that was not a good idea. Alright, we can sacrifice two lands though, because we have a massive discount on our cards. But I probably did sequence that a bit incorrectly. Alright, this is a good draw. It means they have to chump block with the Rejuvenator, which they were going to do anyways. This exiles their graveyard. Um, I guess I play this one? What's their extra turn? Epiphany? Yeah, we probably play this Shieldred. Then, in that case... And then we pass. Because this can maybe trigger a few times and deal some damage or whatever. I kind of hope they just blind... Or they just cash in the Tamiyo here to take an extra turn. I think that's what I'm banking on. Okay, they did not do it, so there's no extra turn here. No, you gotta take out the lock vein. You can't take out the Cabal. This is incorrect. I, I already have an auto discount of two. I have two uh, jet medallions in play. You don't want to do that. But they didn't think about it, I guess. I think that was a bit of an overlook. So right, we're leaving up our Cyclonic Rift. I can get behind that. Okay, that's another card in my deck that actually does not work in the face of uh, stuff. Oh, right. I forgot that was going to happen. I legit forgot I was going to lose my my shieldred. That was a that's a whoopsie. Okay, so I did find a removal spell for Tamio. I can also what else do I have? Let's see if my opponent interacts. I I'd love them to like stop this. Let's see if they do. They do not. All right. Kind of unfortunate. What are we tutoring for? I actually don't know. Cyclonic Rift isn't really a big deal right now. I can't exile the Grave... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I can basically cast Ulamog. So I don't see why I shouldn't grab that card. It's just like the best thing to do. And I guess I can play you. No reason to play anything else because they'll just get rid of it. They did not Cyclonic Rift. Wow. Interesting. Do we hit time warp this time? They're they're at the 50% mark now, right? So they're at the halfway point. They did not hit it. I can still use Uro to find it. I cannot kill Uro currently. Return target parents to start saying, okay, sure. They bounce that so it doesn't exile their graveyard, which I don't really know if I was concerned about, to be honest with you. I'll shuffle away the card they see right now, probably. Uh, this feels like it helps me. Oh, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't, because Davriel's emblem means I wasn't going to die to it anyways. Yeah, it probably didn't matter. Probably didn't matter. Okay, let's get that. Let's go back to our turn. Yep. Uh, so I exile Uro and Tamio. There's nothing else to exile that's worth exiling. So works for me. And I don't know if two damage matters. I'm just gonna not swing because maybe leaving up Soul Shatter does something. Not very likely, but. You never know. Could make them sacrifice something if they don't choose to cast Tamiyo. Okay, this is six mana. Primeval Titan, sure. That's kind of cool. Don't know if this is the deck for it, but I, I mean, it's kind of cool. I don't hate it. I like the Root Snare tech here, that's pretty cool. 
Primal Titans is interesting. What are your, what are our what are our like awesome lands? What do we like here? Man land and Castle Vantress. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. That's kind of cool. All right. Swingies with you. Oh, the next card was Time Warp. The next card was Time Warp. Oh, no. oh wait, I think it was. I think it was. Yes, it was. The next card they were going to play was Time Warp off the top. I think that was the first card I saw get exiled. That is absolutely hilarious. Um, I see no reason to make Ulamog an artifact. It just leads it to die to more cards, right? It's already indestructible. It's not going to die to my thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and not target it with the Saga. Eliminate also doesn't really do much right now. Uh, yep, I'll just pass back. Kind of wish I could do a little bit more than just swing with Ulamog, but it's fine. Can't say I'm too upset with that as my one thing to do. They still have Cyclonic Rift. They still have Cyclonic Rift. If they're paying attention, if they look at their exile, they know what not to name. But at this point, you probably just minus Tamio and get value. I don't think plussing even makes any sense. Yeah, this, this makes more sense to me. Can I kill that? I cannot kill that. Alright, let's do this. See if I can't dump some of these cards so I don't get into a pickle. And... Let's do nothing else, because there's nothing else to do. Yeah, currently... There's nothing crazy they can do. I think they can find answers regardless, though, out of my deck, because the double tutor in my graveyard. I think they actually can find something. Wait a minute. They didn't take an extra turn. The one ring. The one ring. <laughs> I had protection. I cast the one ring last turn. I had protection. Oh, I had protection. They went and read it. They're like, what happened? I had protection because of the one ring. I think I did, right? I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, I cast it last turn. They may have been confused because I had a counter on it, and they thought it wasn't the last turn I had cast it, but it was. So I had protection. They couldn't target me. Okay. So after looking at my deck, thinking about what Emrakul could have done if I didn't have protection, they could have gotten Baleful Mastery to deal with Ulamog. And they could have gotten um, Feed the Swarm to deal with my enchantment. That's th the Saga. The Phyrexian Scriptures that exiles their graveyard, which they probably don't want to have happen. And they could also, if they're paying attention... No, no, they couldn't have because it was gone, right? They packed and negationed it. But they could have gotten Necropotence and killed me with it by paying all my life and then just killing me. But uh, obviously that was uh, it was countered in my graveyard and I can't get it out of my own graveyard. So that wouldn't have killed me. So yeah, they're out to actually doing anything significant with the double ambition out of my graveyard was already answered. So all they could really do was exile Ulamog and feed the swarm my saga, which uh, I think we're still just fine against. Just another Emrakul that doesn't seem to be very good. <laughs> another example of it. Mm -hmm. Amara, all right. The sweeper's removal feels pretty straightforward. Got a Liliana, too. Yeah, Necropotence is alright. I wish I had... Yeah, I was going to say, I wish I was either on the play or a one-mana removal spell, because I have a lot of those. And green can't work without that, so... I'll probably end up just killing my opponent's commander with the go for the throat. Assuming they don't just, like, out of nowhere play. Okay, they didn't. Yeah, it probably makes sense to do that. <laughs> Although, Delighted Halfling, as it stands, is probably just more powerful than my opponent's commander. Which is stupid, but it is what it is. Alright, opponent doesn't have a land. I cannot kill this, otherwise I would. Alright, yeah, they're just done. They missed a land drop, and uh, that's it. They just missed a land drop. Which did mean it would have been maybe nice to just kill the halfling, but I wouldn't have known that, and that isn't even the end-all be-all. They could still do something else pretty degenerate. But, I'll take it. Ooh, alright, I had to blow my nose. Uh, yep, we like this hand.
Uh, no. Rather you not get that. Regal Bunnicorn. Nice. And in, in, in T is annoying as well. I think I'm going to harass the hand more. Yeah, we're just going to take this. And probably kill their commander. It's not an artifact, right? Yeah, it's not. Oh, they chose to play this instead. Interesting. I probably would have played their commander. Or I probably would have played my commander if I were them. Alright, Dark Ritual into my commander is really good. This does kill it, but I might not care about that. I'm just going to cast it. I think this is fine. It gets rid of their creature, and then if they kill my commander, it, I I don't even know how relevant it is in the long run of this game anyways. The Dawn part is annoying. Power 2 or less is annoying. Because that's like two of the cards in the graveyard. <clears throat> um, let's play this tapped and pass. I would well. My opponent has to. I was gonna say I don't. I don't think I ever. Oh, they just didn't. Oh wait, no. It's a. It's a. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. For some reason, I thought it. It worked differently. All right, well, we're just losing now. My opponent just has, like, perfect reanimate nonsense that I can't stop. Of course. Does this exile? Nope. Opponent has another removal spell for my commander if it ever uh, comes up. Is this a three? It is. Okay, so we have to get the um, exile all three drop card, which actually hoses their entire board. Shadows verdict and deals with their graveyard as well. So, okay, um. Let's just kill it now. And I don't think I played a land. Let's I I probably need to draw at least one card. All right, that wasn't wasn't great. I probably can't do it again. Okay, so play you, play you. And I probably can't draw again. Oh, man, I really... Yeah, I just can't draw again. Because if they fire up the equipment, I am dead if I don't draw an answer to it. Okay, that doesn't have any text on it. That was weird. I'm not upset with that one. <clears throat> so they have an answer to my Planeswalker. Or my Commander. But I'd probably still play it because it comes with a clue token. Right, I could just draw, and that's probably better. It also commits my opponent's mana to do something that they might not want to do. I can recast it too. Like, I still had mana to do that again. That is an Ulamog, I think. I believe that is an Ulamog. How much mana is this? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'll have two left. Unfortunate. I can't play all that, everything I want. Let's exile you and you. We did it. We got super close, though. I almost did not survive that. This is Mono Red with a bunch of creatures. I'm on the play as well. This is a much better outlook than the last game. We still have one of the best one-drops, but it is not the best one-drop. This is a two-drop, right? Yep. 
Taras the Hand. Uh, all of this kind of sucks. Let's take that. This does not have haste, right? The hearse makes it so I'll never have like crazy value with the shielder, but that doesn't really matter. Oh, uh, yep, I just passed. I gotta leave up go for the throat before I leave up anything else. Opponent bend a land off the top, so I kind of assume they can recast their commander. Alright, I would love a land. Be really nice, but I guess it's not the end of the world if I don't get one. It's actually really bad if I don't get one, but it's not completely over. Um, I would like to kill this, but I kind of really, really, really need to do something. Actually, you know what? I probably should have killed this. Actually, yeah, because this dies to a braid, which my opponent will probably just cast. So that was that was a bit of a mistake there. I didn't respect the braid. Yeah, I should have respected her braid. Maybe my opponent does something else this turn, but not terribly likely. What does this do? Sacrifice this, create a young hero roll token. Okay. They did not crew the unlicensed hearse. They could have. They also just gave me the mana off this which is completely insane yeah that doesn't they should not have done that i don't think they just gave me they should have abraded this like they even have the mana right now to do it that just i i like very very confusing to me very confusing So do I kill their commander again? I'm not sure. Well, assuming they play it. Playing a scrapyard token can also be problematic for me. They're willing to trade this with a braid, and I don't really think that works out in my opponent's favor. Because I get to recast my commander, and this turn cycle involves you not playing a creature. So I don't really know. You know what? I'm just going to kill it. I'm just going to kill it with a spell. This way I get to block um, and protect Ujin a little bit. Are they going to braid my power stones? Probably a little too late for that. Yep, they do it now anyways. This game would have been way different if they did this earlier. Strange they wound up doing it anyways. I guess that was the point of holding on to it. I, I, I don't know. Did not draw a land, but I will just run this out. They have a Den of the Bugbear, which I guess I'll respect and not swing. I think the long term favors me anyways. What? How big can this get right now? It can get big enough to swing past Shieldred, but I'm just going to stop the Den from swinging. I think that's just fine. I don't really know if pushing four damage is how I'm like, you know, winning this game. Especially with stuff like this in my hand. So this just works out. The scrapyard thing is a little annoying though, but it's not... It's hard for them to ever, like, pay five mana to make this indestructible, right? It's just kind of, like, hard to do that. It's actually quite difficult to do that. <clears throat> they can do it right now, but again, they'd lose all of their lands. <laughs> they would lose all their lands to do that. Molten Impact, sure. Like, you do sacrifice a bunch of lands, and that's not ideal. Alright, so I play this, I play that. This lets me uh, cast Ujin. And then next turn, I get Cityscape Leveler. I don't even care about this unlicensed hearse, anyways, but. I think the infinite 2-2s two my opponent can't stop that draw a card are probably way more than enough to stop this. Mono Red does not win with an empty hand and an empty board.
So now we're just like going through the motions. Unless they do something crazy, it is possible. They can recast their commander right now and crew the hearse and get a commander trigger. Oh, it gets trample? No way. I didn't know it got trample. It gets trample. Never mind. Never mind. I'm dumb. I just didn't know that's how that worked. Okay. Um, still probably an automatic win, though. Don't think my opponent can reasonably get out of this. Let's just kill this. I don't even care about their commander. They can't make a scrapyard token and also make it indestructible. The leveler will kill it. Blood Moon? <laughs> Fun, it has Blood Moon. What? <laughs> Well, hopefully they know not to cast it, because it doesn't do anything against me. It actually shuts down their lands. Don't think you want to play Blood Moon in the same deck as these. But you know what? The first sliver's all over the place. Just keeps the format honest, I guess. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of weird. <laughs> Surely we hit Esper Sentinel and feel like a king. No dice. Um, land tax. I don't really care about land tax. Alright, I'm going to take the horn because the horn is spooky scary. I do not care about land tax. Uh, you can have all the lands you want, my friend. So, how do I negate the land tax trigger? Can I with a fetch land? No, I can't, unless I fail the find, which obviously is a terrible idea. Land tax only works if you're on the draw really and again guaranteeing a land drop does not win you this game it just doesn't like do really anything in my opinion at all i just don't like the card i'd rather land tax itself be a good card than just like drawing lands not to say that it isn't completely useless still does something just doesn't do anything I'm, like, concerned with. This is an interesting card, too. Uh, flash, 1-2, flying. It's a human, right? So they're just playing every human in the game, I guess? Sure. I have a lot of good, solid ways to deal with everything my opponent's going to do this game. I really don't want to draw off my lock vein. I'm probably going to have to. Yeah, it's probably just going to be the best choice. Did they just not activate land tax? I don't think they did. That's weird. Okay, I didn't have to. Look at that. Alright, so we increasing ambition, I think, Shadow's Verdict? Because it exiles basically everything my opponent's deck wants to do. For the most part. I wonder if they're just out of basics. Like, they're just out of planes like they got them all. It's only planes, right? Or is it all basics? It's any basic. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm just going to send the verdict here. I think that's fine. What does this do? Draw a card, two our creatures. Yeah, sure. Paul is playing some interesting cards. Pun is playing not enough cards, I guess. Uh, let's play Arena? Or do I play Parting? I think I'm going to play Arena. I think that makes more sense. I can't kill General... Well, actually, I can't. What am I talking about? Oh, Vanishing Verse. Spicy. Okay. All right. I like it. Uh, all right. Let's tutor for something that I can cast next turn, shall we? 
Can't put anything in the graveyard because it will just die. One of these probably makes a lot of sense. I like the Liliana to harass my opponent. And what's a totally useless card to draw? Mere Convert. So I'll just put that in the graveyard. I'd rather, you know, draw a land. It just doesn't... not convinced that... It's probably the worst card in my deck. I, I think a land drop is just better as well, so... So I can mastery this and plus away this. Is that what I want to do? I can also disfigure. I could just play this. No, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep this smooth. We're just gonna smooth it out. We're just gonna kill everything. This figure will probably be useful later. Okay. Uh, let's pass. I don't see a reason to crack the Wayfarer's Bobble. I could seek for a card as well. Either or makes some sense. That just... Oh, that doesn't actually die to my Liliana. Should I disfigure this? I need to figure out of my hand for the Lockbane anyways. Maybe I should. I'd rather them not get an attack trigger if I can just, you know, stop that from being a thing. It's not the most exciting use of the card, though. Alright, let's see if we draw a land. Wait. Yes. Yeah. Alright, no land. So this is still a really good card, though. Okay, my opponent's hand must be literally six cards of interaction. That is highly unusual. But, uh, sure. Cathar Commando, sure. I can bait a removal spell when they go to swing with it. Yeah, alright. I, I mean, they could have maybe protected it or something, but I guess they couldn't, and then the ultimate just wins the game. Okay, so Mono Black is not kind of the same at all, actually, as like Mono White, if all you want to do is play a long, slow, grindy game, and then win with some value here or there. Mono Black struggles, um, I mean, I it doesn't struggle as bad if you have like the Last Hope Ultimate or something, maybe. Maybe even the Veil Ultimate, but Shieldred's flip and all that jazz just doesn't really exist, right? In most situations, especially how half your deck already does what this does. So it's not like a side objective or doing anything that your deck isn't doing anyways. Which is a little rough, but I still like mono black, slow, grindy, borderline control nonsense. I still like the strategy. It doesn't really lose to creature attacking because you kind of kill everything but there are a lot of creatures in this format that do a pretty good job at protecting themselves or you can do a fairly decent job at protecting your creatures through 46 removal spells it's not impossible but it's still a huge uphill battle and very favorable for you with that being said obviously a lot of green decks are creature based decks because that's what green likes to do and green is still the worst thing to bump into. Uh, maybe next to blue, obviously. I don't interact with counter spells too efficiently. I don't have too many discard spells. But um, mono green is like, oh, you know, a bunch of creatures. Let me kill them all. Yeah, but Pock and Itali and Emoti don't really care. They do not care. They actually don't even care if they themselves get killed as a card. They don't care. Uh, and that's just... That, that it's just impossible to, to even it, even the playing field. Um, unless you have a way to draw a lot of cards. And then stabilize with big swingy plays. Right? Well, usually big swingy plays. 
Um, so like the One Ring and other things. The Mono White deck had a lot more artifact card draw than this Mono Black deck did, but there are some, obviously, more efficient cards in black to draw than just artifacts, so that's what we did instead. But um, even still, right, you're not really going to stabilize against the creature-based green decks, and they're going to outvalue you. Atali and Emoti come with, like, free cascades, and um, Pock is Pock. I don't need to explain Pock at all. And, and that's just not not really good for you. It's just really rough to stabilize. And, like, you're not going to always have Dark Ritual of your own in doing degenerate things. We don't have Ragavan. We don't have the one-mana Omega-tier cards. We're not green. Um, and we're not white for, like, you know, mana tithe and swords and stuff. We just, like, it's just... Cut Down doesn't kill everything, and Disfigure doesn't kill everything. Swords does. <laughs> it's just it's just so hard to to uh pull ahead right but there are some pretty good matchups nonetheless right if your opponent is really trying to do something creature centric you probably will destroy them if they are not a tali or a modi um which is probably going to be your average average uh creature based deck anyways right so i can't unfortunately recommend this but I do like it. I like Mono Black. Um, it's nice to play Shield Druid. I don't think I've played this as a commander. I've certainly played all the other ones. Um, I think you could replace Davriel and Shield Druid and just have a Davriel deck. And it would just be better because Davriel's effect... Uh, not only does it come in a turn earlier and really plays nicely with the two rocks. Um, it, it has more relevant text on it on average than this does right so that that's just something to take and consider you could just swap the two <laughs> and probably have a better deck but uh that's not what i was trying to do but yeah let me know what you thought about it i, I still have fun with it i still like this commander i love mono black obviously so like comment subscribe and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching